Welcome, good morning, and thank you for visiting the channel. My name's George, and today we're going to carry on looking at this VHF Hunter, the RP38. Hopefully we'll get some electrical testing done and see how we get on. We might travel further, we might not, but let's play with it. So, at the end of the last video, we left it in such a way that it was working but didn't sound too good has various problems. We've got the dial cord to do. We've got to check out the main board. We've got to check out the amp board. We're going to redo the battery terminals, check the alignment. We're, we're just going to go through this set as you would with any sort of radio that's new to you. So what am I going to do first? Well, the first thing I've got to do is I've got to get this set out of the case. And it's fairly straightforward. I've been uh, looking around and uh, I've discovered what you have to do and really it's a case of brute force and ignorance you need a flat screwdriver and you have to lever off these caps very gently so that you don't break them and just there we go just pop them off you don't need to use masses of force and we get a Phillips screwdriver and we just unscrew the, the handle and the whole of the top of the radio should come apart at the same time if uh, if my viewing of the internet is correct the handle looks reasonably straight so I'm not worried about that for now and now the top of the radio should come apart now we've got several things to disconnect. The first is the power plug and that is loose in the connector so we'll have to uh, find out why that is. Looks like the spring terminal is uh, bent slightly different so that's the power terminal there. The amplifier board connector unplugs like that. Let's untangle it from the speaker connector and the aerial connector just slides off and again that is fairly loose on the on the Motorola plug there so we've got the A radio out now and there's the speaker as it was dangling loose uh, I also wanted to take out the amplifier board because that was something I've got to check so I'm gonna put the speaker back down there and the amplifier board should just unscrew from the bottom. So let's disconnect the speaker connectors. They're all fairly loose in their terminals, so I'm going to tighten them up a little bit. And that takes the whole of the case assembly out. And what are we left with? Well, we're left with a fairly sturdy looking old circuit board. I'll say it's uh, reasonable. Could take the bolts out of it for now and have a look at the board because I do want to get and check these capacitors. Just undo these. So that's the amp board apart. And it's actually looking at this, it's printed for two different types of driver transistor. You've got this three-legged CAN beast here, or you've got the three-legged TO, TO92 type, is it? I can't remember the designations now. But that's not what I'm interested in at the moment. What I'm interested in is these capacitors and the resistors, just to see if they're still within specification. All right, so that's 2, 2, 2, 7, that's not too bad, 2, 3, that's not too bad at all. Uh, what else have we got resistor-wise? The rest of these are capacitors. Let's get the capacitor tester down. And because you can't really test capacitors in circuit, that one will lift that leg there. OK, 
Come on, break free. There you go. Like that. And we'll break this leg free on here. Let's just give a quick test of these. Now these sets were built in somewhere between 1970 and 1976 according to the Tinternet. 28.64, 1.16 ohms, 25, not too high. Let's just test this one. 559 and it should be 400. So this capacitor is definitely tired. It's 160 microfarads over its stated value. So rather than mess around, what I'm going to do is I think we're going to do a complete board recap here. Just on the electrolytics, these ceramics will not have drifted. 400 microfarads. Um, what have we got? What I shall do is I shall hunt down the right capacitors and then we shall play. OK, so while we're in the middle of me doing something else, I'm just cutting in to say if you are liking this video, then please click the like button. It does help the channel quite a bit. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click subscribe and click the bell for notifications of when the next part's coming up. At least that way you won't miss anything. Also, if you could share the video amongst your friends, amongst your neighbours, amongst your family, I mean, just just anybody that you might think would be interested in some hairy bloke fixing old radios it's it's fun right so i've got uh, the five capacitors needed for this amp board so it's just a matter of uh, taking these out and replacing them so not going to do anything extra special just going to drop that one out because I've already got the one leg out. And clear the hole. Like that. And yep, make sure that that's the right one. Make sure it's the right way round, positive this way. is I'm not happy with the way that looks so I'm just going to reflow some solder on the rest of these joints nope that looks good to me now so that should be the amplifier board all done I'm not going to change anything else at this point when we test it we'll set the bias and the the drive levels according to the manual right so we we know that all of these are pretty well shot i'm not going to reuse them so they can all go in the recycling he says recycling <laughs> you all know they're going in the bin don't you because we had the amp board with some iffy capacitors on it i'm going to look at certainly the electrolytics on here now also this has Alan Bradley resistors on it which again I found in the past admittedly on older sets not not as young as this to have gone quite far out of their range so we're just going to get the meter up again let's give it another check right okay and for example this one this is one zero and three so that should be a 1k resistor Whoop. Oh! no so it should be a 10k resistor sorry because my brain's gone 
Farty. And that's reading 11.8. So it has gone slightly high. This is another 10k resistor. That one's reading within spec. Okay. Now this should be a 1k, 1 0 and 2 zeros. That's reading 1.3. So that's out of spec. 177. That's a 16. That should be 160. 160, 170. That one's in spec. That one is well out of spec. That 10k is reading nearly 12k out of spec. We know the set was working. We know it tunes in. It's one of those decisions. Let's see what the capacitors look like. Well, that's had a bit of a soldering iron scorch from something. Let's pop this big capacitor up and a couple of the others and we'll see what they turn out like. Ten percent at six is point six, so it's quite high. So I think I'm going to end up changing the electrolytics on this main board as well, rather than have you sit here and watch that and me select capacitors again. Let me do the job, then we'll come back to it. Done some soldering and all the capacitors. Let's turn it over. All the electrolytics bar this one. So let's go for it. that is done. Now while we've got this in pieces I'm going to just give the contacts a squirt of uh, contact cleaner in the switches. Okay and while we're here I'm going to go in and do the volume pot which is nestled down here. And that's certainly smooth there, bass and treble. Point. Now the excess cleaner that's run out, just a bit of kitchen paper. Here is where the dial plate, dial face sticks on, and it's held on by this double sided sticky tape. I'm just going to peel all this off. When I replace the dial face, it will have some new double sided on there and I'll use the same stuff as what we use on the mobile phone screens that I've used in previous videos. This is just uh, isopropyl in this. I'm just gonna try and wipe off the glue. Just needs a little bit of soaking, a little bit of rubbing and that will come off. Let me clean this up and then once this is all cleaned up we shall get ready and we shall do a dial cord. Yeah, that'll be fun. So we've reached the end of this video, I think. And I think what we're going to do is in the next one, we're going to do the dial cord and we're going to power it up and test it, I think, and just make sure that everything's working as is. Hopefully we'll get the dial cord in straight away and it won't be too much of a pain. If not, you're going to watch me struggle. We're going to test it, as I say, put it all together and test it. We're going to clamp the speaker down, make sure that's done. I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. And if you do like the video, as I said before, click the like, click thumbs up, click subscribe, do all the normal things that YouTubers ask you to do. And next video will be a dial cord, a faceplate, test and alignment, I hope. Thanks very much and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.